<laughs> we need a, a, a an opening like Reef mm. Dudes. Oh, uh, I was on his live stream last night. He's got the opening down. It's really nice. I'm gonna have to watch. Uh, soak it in. Uh, it's really good. Inspiration. Inspiration. All right, what's up, you two? What's happening? All right. Well, you know what? We got two things today. First. We're gonna talk about captive bread fish, wild caught fish, a Hawaii ban, whatever. But also, I, I was given a task to start uh, today <laughs> off, so I'm gonna do it and we'll get past it quick. For those of you who don't know, uh, like uh, BRS team here like uh, brought on some other team members and some investors into the BRS wheel, like wheelhouse. Oh yeah, right? we're going big places. All right, uh, we are, man. <laughs> You're gonna hear it in just a second, actually. Uh, so if anybody's wondering what that means, it means we're going to the moon, man. Come on along, come along with. <laughs> and then also the big the task that I was given today mm. is share all the jobs that we're hiring for because uh, some of these can be done remote. Uh, yeah. And some of them, if you live in Minneapolis or would like to move to Minneapolis, come on down because we're looking for the best. So two of them uh, actually are actors. Yeah, that's so right. So two more beers TV uh, uh, like personas. We've got a couple. Uh, I get all of those. When everybody applies, I get the email. And uh, I was like, we've already gotten three, I think, in oh, the really? last like couple days. Yeah. Wow. We've got, like, I think we locked one down, actually, already. Yeah, I think so. so. Uh, we're also, <laughs> would you like to be a beers TV editor? Because we're going to eat another one of those. Dave, he's there right here. He's been yep. doing it for how long? Eight years? Seven Eight. years? Eight, Eight years. years. we got Dave as well, so he could be the number, third, the number Num three number editor three on editor. staff. Yeah. Right? Uh, and we are now got enough people. That would be one, two, three, four uh, actors, three editors, uh, uh, tank support, Beers TV investigates support. Mm. we got too many people, so we're getting a project manager as well. To keep us all. <laughs> Just keep us all. <laughs> so you want to be a Beers TV project manager, help with descriptions keep and titles. this guy and this guy uh, in line. The calendar, yeah, yeah. You know, whip me, make sure I stay on task. Uh, you know, you can go apply. By the way, it's uh, work at Beers TV down in the footer of the website. Oh, yeah, you'll see it. Careers, and it says work at. Yeah, BRC. there you go. Uh, you can find all that. Uh, what that means for you guys is uh, you should expect, uh, unless uh, we get the wrong people, uh, you should expect uh, more Beers TV investigates. That one's already in the work, so you're going to start to yeah. see us like, you know, test products more. Mm. You're going to see uh, we got a coralline algae test going, and we're going to have uh, I got a, a coral calcium, pH test going. I got a calcium reactor test running right now. That one we just got restarted again today. We just shot yesterday. We just shot another UV BRS TV investigates new format for that one. Uh, but check it out; it's going to be cool. That comes out Wednesday. All right. We also sell stuff here, so we also are going to double down on our commitment to help with that. Yeah. So you know, you see all Thomas's videos on like a, like a review. What about like a product guide or like a how-to or basic, basic setup? setup. Or, yeah, I think like, that one's gonna be good. Even after you bought it, let's make sure you're successful using it. Yep. Right. So I like we'll it. see that as well. Uh, hopefully, tank tours as well. Ooh, right? this is so, like you go like customer tank tours. Now this is in its infancy in the idea, but we're gonna try it here mm -hmm. locally and have somebody shoot some of the best tanks in Minneapolis. Put them out there on the YouTube, see how it does, and then maybe that person might travel around the states and film somebody else's tanks, one of your tanks. I don't know. Be we'll really see how it goes. Awesome. It maybe would be awesome. You get to see then, hopefully, I mean, this is this one's a little aspirational, the tank tour ones. All the other ones are legit. Yeah. Uh, the tank tour one, we're going to test it out locally, see what you guys think. If you like appreciate it, I'm going to go to bat for this one. Yeah. Uh, which is, let's go find the best tanks out there show them in all their beauty, and then maybe write a little article about, you know, what, it, how it goes, what goes into this, uh, the, like, you know, equipment, but how they set it up, you know, how long it took, all that kind of stuff. So you can get, like, you know, kind of find maybe some of those mentors out there. That yeah, guy has yeah. a tank, or uh, like, uh, yeah. you're trying to achieve, uh, well, boom, follow that. And not just, uh, and, and that's not like we did, it's not like, every episode will be like Sean's 2,000 gallon tank. Uh, mm -hmm. Realistic tanks, what you guys are using. So maybe it's a 40 breeder, maybe it's a, an amazing 120, but we're gonna we're kind of playing with that idea. And all those people put together uh, have been tasked to build us a new set as well. Yeah, right over here. Yeah, right there. Uh, so it's right over here up. you can't see it, but we're gonna build a new set, so it'll be kind of fun. You can see new stuff, uh, I don't know. I don't know, it's gonna be great. Also, behind the scenes also, we're hiring more picking and shipping people. I think it was like three they're looking for. You guys are ordering too much stuff. <laughs> uh, marketing team's looking for a CRM marketing specialist, which uh, I think is like it's email a term, and HubSpot. Yeah, it's so. a term that uh, they're that 
Jeff was fighting with on whether or not that's a, like what that means. But basically, it's customer engagement. It's customer man, uh, communication. If you got awesome email, CRM skills, man, and uh, I don't know if that has to be here or not. So, uh, and you like reefing, man, join us. It's at the bottom. Uh, we'll also, wholesale seats, uh, if you want to work in the BRS uh, element go, of the wholesale. Yeah, industry. go work with your LF, LFSs around the country and brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Support the uh, local fish store. And if you're a tech junkie and you happen to be uh, a med I know Magento, which is like the website uh, software that we use. Yeah. Uh, they're hiring two developers. Two <laughs> now. I, like, I think there's one, two, three, four. So this would be number six, uh, <laughs> five and six, actually. There's one uh, local, one uh, uh, hobbyist who's also a, also a developer oh, that yeah. works here, mm -hmm. or that's uh, local here. I yep, Kevin? Every time one of these pull up, I try to get him. Yeah. So, yeah, if you could code and reef, man. <laughs> you. Uh, all right. Uh, we're also hiring a, a writer. So, uh, like, if you want to write articles, like, maybe you hate video uh, and you just don't want to sit through video for some reason. Probably not you guys, but I don't know. Hopefully. Yeah. Would you uh, like to write articles? Uh, write articles uh, about, about the gear uh, we talk about, the experiments that we do, yeah. or even just anything. All right, there. Uh, and I got two more. So, these ones aren't, didn't make the cut. But if, like, the superstar shows up, I'm going to go to bat for. Yeah. Right? Uh, all right, so if you are a social media superstar or like a, a manager of that type of thing and you know like I'm your man or woman, uh, oh, oh, you yeah. should apply because I'm going to go to bat for you. This doesn't, this, we're not actually hiring for this yet, but if you already know it exists, I told them if I stumble across the right person, I'm going to hire a up. social media manager. Yeah. Yep. Currently, I do that along with other things. So I know. If you, if you, do if you can Randy. beat me, and I, <laughs> God knows there's some tons of people out there that can manage our social media better than me, mm -hmm. please. Yeah, we need you. All right. And related to that tank tour idea, find the right person. The traveling video shooter, yeah. right? So if you want to go shoot tanks all over the nation and you love reef tanks and you happen to be really good at video, like, I mean, really good. Like, really good. Uh, this is your core profession. And you would travel. Hit us up. Yes. We would do all kinds of if things. If you want to travel a lot. A lot. Yeah, hit us up. All right, so those are all of them uh, out there. You can find them at, uh, like, a BRS, BRS uh, bulkresupply.com slash uh, careers, careers yeah. or down in the footer. Adam's uh, also posting it here in the comments while we talk, too. So. All right. So, I don't know. We're shooting for the moon here. Come along with us. <laughs> All right. So, today's topic, uh, we're just, uh, you know, we're talking, I've been talking a lot about this with Elliot. I've been talking about it with all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. But as a lot of you know, uh, Hawaii shut down basically all of the export of fish and probably isn't going to turn back on as far as we know it. So back in like 2018, they they started putting some uh, stricter you know regulations for who can get these commercial fishing licenses, and then December or like late last year, uh, they came out again and said, okay, well now all of the commercial, you know, all of these people who were collecting for the aquarium industry or the, you know, they can no longer, they will not renew them unless they have a, uh, a Hawaii EPA uh, approval beforehand. And say, I mean, from the sounds of it, I did some brief reading, from the sounds of it, like that approval is hard to get. So nobody's like able or to, zero. or zero. So nobody's able to re renew for these licenses that are for aquarium, commercial aquarium hobby. Effectively shut down. Ba right? Yeah, exactly. I think there was some like net some changes and then people will yeah. kind of fudged it with too many nets, yeah. uh, woven together or something. I, I don't know the whole deal. But really what it kind of brought up is the conversation of how long will we be able to take fish out of the ocean from really anywhere? And how's the hobby going to react to that long term? You know, do you feel like I, I'm looking for you guys yeah. to answer here, too, because I'm going to read, go back and read all the comments. But like, do you feel like it was fair that Hawaii shut it down? Unfair, expected, unexpected. Uh, what are your feelings on the matter? Mm -hmm. Because I really want to know the pulse from the yeah. community, like yeah. what, what you guys think about it Throw and it what the future is going. Uh, so um, there's, I mean, there's a couple sides of the argument from what I was, from what I was seeing. One side of the argument is um, that it's a, it's a good thing in, um, in that the, the, a lot of the environmentalists are saying, you know, like you know, collection of uh, the collection approach for fish 
is difficult on the on the ecosystem. And mm. there's studies out there that you know the west side of Hawaii is has some of the most uh, robust biodiversity and populations, and these fish breed more faster than we can collect them. And uh, and the other side of the coin is no, it's uh, it's hurting the people that are collecting them for the industry. Uh, there's, you know, there's kind of back and forth between it. But you know, I actually, so I'm just going to give you my opinion right up front. I think it's, I think this type of regulation is actually a good thing in that it's pushing mm -hmm. us forward and pushing the, uh, putting the pressure on captive breeding and exploring and expanding like maybe more money maybe more funding goes into these captive bred operations where they can you know start to get these pelagic type fish that spawn in the open water which is a really difficult thing to like try to replicate on land or captive in the in captivity uh i think it starts to push the envelope it makes people work a little harder to lessen some pressure so the flip side that a lot of people will tell you is, well, like uh, some of these fish you can't get to, uh, mm. you know, yet anyway, to you can't captively uh, breed some of these fish. I think like flame wrasses is one mm. of them. Uh, mm. Elliot was telling me about. It's pretty bummed about. Yeah. Bummed out about. He actually had a couple of, uh, uh, I think it was bandit angels that he, he flew all the way here to Minnesota because somebody had a couple of them and one of them was uh, sick. He flew all the way here last week, picked yeah. up those two fish, and then flew them back in his lap to uh, uh, California so he can care for them because there are really only a couple of the last ones around now. Mm. Hopefully, be able to breed them at some point and bring them back to the hobby. But, like, yeah, some of these things are going to be harder mm. to do in, in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, it's mainly the the big conversation around around the whole thing is the the yellow tangs and mm, then mm. how that's a I mean it's such a popular fish uh, the Achilles tangs also from that algae. same area yeah so and that's part of the argument too yes it eats some of our algae in our tanks but it also eats algae out there in the ocean and mm. depending on the numbers that you take that could impact the the ocean to some degree too but I also read that of the uh, was it th of the 30 million or so fish that are in the aquarium hobby that are collected for the aquarium hobby as a whole? Uh, two percent of those come from Hawaii. Yeah, it's most of it. Yeah, and, and well, now don't quote me on these numbers. This is just what I've been reading in articles. So you know, I don't have the, those actual numbers, but somewhere to that degree is what has been reported. And uh, the, the the bulk of the harvesting is coming from like. Indonesia and Philippines and places that you know we we as you as US doesn't really have much say in the regulation of to do yeah so I actually had this conversation uh, with a, a wholesaler so everybody's got their unique perspective on this mm. and if you're in this uh, profession uh, you'll probably have a different uh, like uh, opinion than if you're you know specifically trying to uh, Just protect a, hobbyist a specific or, area yeah. or something mm. of uh, your yeah. backyard uh, you know, I I don't know, he, but he said something diff really interesting because it was actually in relation to coral, uh, collecting wild coral. And he said actually two things, one about fish and one about mm. coral. Uh, and in terms of the coral, he's like, yes, we collect wild coral, but like we're in the business of collecting the only artistically perfect specimens uh, out of the ocean. 99.99% .99 of it is not artistically perfect. A, it's way too big. Yeah. Uh, or uh, it's an ugly shape or it's the wrong <laughs> color or whatever. Like, we are taking out very, very little huh. coral out of the ocean. Uh, like, I, now, I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you the coral that I see uh, uh, for sale matches that. It does not match what you normally see in the ocean. Hmm. Like artistically perfect, perfect coloration, that sounds perfect like, shape. That sounds like the way that uh, the food industry and vegetables and stuff is. They only put out to market you know, in the grocery stores the perfect cucumber or mm -hmm. green or red pepper. And actually there's a company that I get advertised to all the time that is they'll send you these deformed uh, yeah. red peppers and green peppers and they're perfectly fine but they're just deformed and they won't make it to the actual grocery shelf because of them. Sign me up. That's cool. I, I, didn't know. Know. I didn't know it. It's like the coals of the vegetable garden. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> uh, okay, so the other thing he said in terms of fish was yes, we take fish out of the ocean mm. but 
it's 0.000001% of the total fish harvest mm. out of the ocean. Oh, it's mostly going to fisheries and bycatch and whatnot? Well, we go into like, a, you know, like human consumption and all mm. that other stuff, you know, that comes out of the ocean. Like, uh, yeah, you could say that like uh, food is more important than a pet, but say that to a pet owner. I don't know, like uh, is a sandwich you know, and like, oh, are we going to divide between a cow and a fish? Uh, and like, uh, if you didn't eat your whole filet of fish uh, sandwich, are you going to mourn its loss? Yeah. I don't know, man. It, and I, I say that kind of recklessly, but it's true. You have to really think about it in the, the total picture here. Right? Well, I, I don't know how much of that I agree with because uh, it may maybe out of all of the fish collection happening, whether it's commercial fishing, food consumption, all this other one, the, the 0 0.110001 percent uh, in this very specific way, who's harvesting yellow tangs for food? It's not mm -hmm. a. It's ornamental. Yeah, but if you think about it in terms of, uh, there's plenty of fish that we have in our tanks that are harvested. For oh food, yeah, right? for sure. Yes. Uh, and some of it harvested for sport fishing. You know, like mm. is that somehow? Why is that legal then? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And some of it is for the pet industry. And. I'm going to tell you right now, because like even, even as it comes for. out of my mouth, the pet industry for harvesting animals in, in the wild just sounds ugly, right? <laughs> and, and it's because, pet industry. because yeah. it, it, it isn't okay in every other industry, like uh, oh. parrots, lizards. Uh, to get wild. Uh, yeah, dogs, cats, puppies, man, whatever. To go grab man. from the wild and you, now it's your pet? No, man, like that. Mm. And, and every method like that uh, of uh, grabbing animals out of their natural habitat Completely is pretty restricted. frowned on uh, these days. A lot days. of it's restricted, yeah. So one of the conversations here is, like it or not for Hawaii, it was inevitable mm. because I, yeah. that's the way every pet industry has gone. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I like it in the core. I think it's a good conversation in the corals and the fish to start relying on. Okay, so think about where we've come over the last decade, you know, two decades of the hobby. Uh, we're now, as hobbyists, or even as like some of these uh, aquatics, um, you know, some of these aquariums and things, we're now more geared to understand the biology behind coral growth and the biology behind fish. So we are, uh, we're better at, and probably we're gonna be more successful at doing this captively, or in aquaculture and captive bred, than we were before. So I actually, part of me is like, yeah, go ahead and start closing some of that down, restrict more of the collection, because we are good enough to do it uh, our skills are good enough to kind of do it at home or do it in these labs or what have you. And I got to be honest, the only thing that's going to drive that is money. Yeah. Right? Like, so, and in the initial phases, you'll probably be expensive, right? The yellow tang will be more expensive than it was when mm. you ca caught it. But once uh, they, like, you know, build up the facility to replace that kind of demand and your guys' money and our money is going to be able to Come you know, back go down. to fund that, it will come back down, man. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I say that because I actually talked to these guys last week. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it's really hard to talk to people in Palau, uh, but <laughs> they're like a total uh, opposite uh, time zone. Is awesome. Yeah. But uh, I talked to the team over at Biota uh, last week, and it's like the first thing he says out of his mouth is, uh, do, we do not want to price gouge people on this. We have to keep it fair price on Oh, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, that uh, was uh, totally un... Uh, uh, I wasn't asked for. I think price is one of their biggest hurdles because of the supply and demand for the captive bred, or just the, just the demand for the wild caught and trying to emulate that in the captive bred uh, automatically kind of forces you to go up there, but you have to stay competitive in the prices because at one point in time, the yellow tangs were 40 to $60 captive bred, you know, because of the effort that's put into it, you have to raise, raise the price up. But now, I mean, I just looked before we got on here, yellow tangs from Hawaii are priced at 400 to $500. No, captive bred are now 200 or 250 So They'll probably come down. It's kind of shifted. Yeah, I, I don't know. And, but when you start to go, I went over to Biota's website. And so, uh, you know, I, I've long thought of ORA as a place to get captive yeah. bred fish. And uh, there's like quite a few there. They did and a lot you of buy them through fish your, your fish store. Yeah. And... Uh, I think you can buy them at Live Aquaria too, actually. Mm. Uh, and uh, probably some online places as well, actually. Yep. Uh, but I was looking at Biota, 
And Boyhood has like a totally different list of fish, and they do it differently. Mm. You know, because there are uh, many of them, they're actually raising them in pens in the ocean, which means oh, they're not yeah. like bubble it's babies. Like aquaculture, no more. Yeah, they're so, like exposed to natural pathogens, which at first glance sounds bad, but also allows them to build their up immune their system. immune system yep. like any natural organism that lives in the ocean. Right. Uh, instead of a bubble baby in a sterile environment. <laughs> so uh, maybe the best possible method is uh, like captive bred then quarantined afterward, mm. you know, uh, like medicated quarantine possibly. Sort that, of like we do. Yeah. yeah, but then you get like a kind of, like a really responsible, healthy pet at the end of it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. So I don't know, they've been toying actually with us about like, hey, would you guys like to sell fish for us? And I don't know, I, we're not, we're like more pump guys than we are fish <laughs> guys, to be honest here. So maybe that materializes, maybe it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know, but it was a really, uh, interesting conversation. I'd love to know if you guys would like to see a sell fish. I have no idea. Nah. Uh, but uh, We did it with corals, but... Well, the idea is actually, what it was kind of exciting for me, especially for a brand new tank, is they have this thing there called like the Biota fish tank, and you can find it on their website. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. so like basically you can buy these like little uh, tank and the kit and everything you need to do to set up a tank, and it has all of these, you know, captive bred fish in it. Hmm. Okay, and the first thing I thought of is like, God, if you could get that like to be the mainstay for, you know, getting your first fish. Hmm. Well, I hate to say that anybody killed a, an animal or a pet, but like if your first rodeo on this is actually captive uh, uh, bred uh, and produced uh, uh, animals, then that's probably better than the ones we took out of the ocean. Yeah, uh, well, you and know? you've just feel differently than yeah. like, when you, if you start on captive bread and then you kind of built into that DNA of how, you know, respectable, I guess, if you want to say is captive bread is versus ocean, then you, then you start to change, like anybody who's coming up as, as in the captive bread world now starts to change the, uh, the demand for only captive bread or majorly captive bread rather than uh, ocean cod. Well, I thought the cool part of this too was, is they're breeding like, you know, like uh, parrot fish and stuff too for food. So behind the scenes, uh, they're like releasing all of, uh, like for, you know, in many cases, uh, for every fish they produce, they go produce like, you know, 10x more and let them go. Mm. Like, so it's a net positive effect on the ocean instead of net negative. So a perfect way for a new reefer to get their, you know, fins wet per se. <laughs> also, you know, like promotes a healthy ocean and is helping the research for producing more parrot fish for food uh, for the population of the planet. Mm. Win, 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 win. I yeah, don't know. I mean, we're already doing it with salmon. We're already doing it with tilapia. We're already doing it with these all, all these other types of like f food staple fish. Uh, we could probably expand that. And parrot fish. So, uh, you know, part of me mourns the loss of like, why didn't I get uh, these banded angels before they were gone? Because he offered them to me. <laughs> like, damn it. Uh, why didn't I get some flame angels, or flame, uh, uh, um, not flame angels, flame wrasses uh, before they were gone as mm. well? They're gone, they may not come back. Uh, but if what that really does is fuel something greater, mm. Yeah, I suppose I, that's I don't a, know, man. I feel like the take. like scales start to tip in the favor of responsibility for me. Yeah, and uh, I think the the tough pill to swallow for for people who've been in the hobby forever, who has an availability of all these types of fish, is to see that avail availability start to dwindle and dwindle to only a certain amount of fish. You just can't get some anymore, and mm -hmm. you have to be okay with that. If that's the wave of the future, if that's the way of the future, until you can find a way to breed them. So yes and no, right? Yeah. So a lot of these places won't ever shut down, probably, uh, you know, different places. Oh, in other right? parts of the world. But yeah. especially if we can reduce the pressure on those places by getting the stuff that we can breed uh, and get those things off of the table. And then take things like, you know, when I started the, ha the hobby, mandarins, yeah. right? Probably number one most killed fish out there. Also one of the coolest fish out there, yeah. right? Okay, well, the mandarin fish, uh, like, really, really sad, but now, captive bred Over and lives on pellets from uh, biota and ore. Yeah, uh, so, just up to our ears in mandarins. Yeah, and they, they eat pellet food now. <laughs> Which makes them less likely to die, because that was one of the biggest reasons they're dying yeah, in the first you, place. You eliminated the, the number one reason they died, 
So not only are your is the like reefer happier because you're not killing your animals, mm -hmm. but you're also not taking animals out of the wild and then killing them in your tank because yeah. you've solved the problem. Yeah. And why? Because it was economically uh, like some business had to oh, yeah. like you know, have a a reason to do this, mm -hmm. right? And so it, for whatever reason, it got economically uh, viable to do. So pressure, kind of like the Hawaii thing, better is the hobby in many ways. We might lose uh, a uh, like a rat, some of the species, yeah. but we might gain something else as well. Well, we we've talked before about um, the the sense of disposable. Uh, how fish are some of our like bat early on uh, mm -hmm. people lose fish and you're like ah, I just lost another tank ah, I'll go to the pet store and get another one for 20 bucks and stuff so even this type of maybe the prices increase for all of these captive bred ones but it also at the same time like if I didn't pay or if, if somebody didn't pay a thousand dollars for their dog would they be less likely to like care about it like if you paid 50 bucks if you paid you know if you paid a cheap amount for some of your other pets do they have less value to you the answer should be no yeah the answer is yes and right and, and it has been with fish okay so the answer it definitely is is if you walk into your big box pet store and you pick up a clownfish for 10 bucks mm -hmm. the price kind of makes it feel disposable yeah it shouldn't be and isn't but the fact that, like, it's like, it makes it, like, there's so equivalent many of a hamster. I know, there's so many you things know? that in my regular day-to-day -day life that I buy for 10 bucks that are just out of, out of mind as soon as it's gone. So, and, like, and, and it makes it also, because it's 10 bucks, it makes it an impulse buy. Like, I, yeah. I picked up this fish in a bowl uh, just because it felt like it one day. Yeah, I've right? seen it. I saw it in the aquarium or I saw it on a movie or something and now I'm just going to get it because it's 10 bucks. I, it's, like, I know when I buy a dog and I bring a dog into my family that I'm into this for 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know that now. Yeah. Like it, if I keep it healthy, I'll be part of my family for 15 years. Mm. If the fish in the fish store is 10 bucks, I don't think you're really thinking about this, like the fact that this clownfish could actually probably live 20 years. You know, if you take care of it, right? Right, right, right. Uh, no, nah, it's just like this whim. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, not a goldfish at the fair. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't. I don't want to like raise price just so people uh, no. take care of them. But it's also an artifact of that, though. I mean, f prices are naturally going to rise just for the cost of the effort that goes into captive breeding, and I, I'm actually okay with paying that if I have to. Well, that's the one thing. Like, let's not artificially increase price for no, no reason, right? No. That doesn't make any sense. But like. What if there's value here? Like, what if we can get healthier, happier pets, respect the ocean, you know, actually find ways to add back into yeah. the ocean? Uh, Expand. Without, like, I'm not talking about taking a $30 fish and making it at 200 no. but what if it was, like, 40 mm. 10 bucks more for an animal that's gonna live 20 years? Those extra dollars goes back to the people that are trying to do this and can start to expand their facilities yeah. and expand what they can I don't know the exact price, but there's definitely a trade-off there that most people would be willing to make, yeah. I think. You know? I don't know. So let's answer a couple of these questions here or uh, share some comments There's anyway. some comments here. Yeah. Uh, first one here is, I live in Hawaii, and to be honest, the reefs here, especially in Oahu, are pretty bare. Really? Ah, straight from the straight from them. So I've heard that actually as a uh, anecdotal component, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what, to, I, I used to go to Hawaii a lot until I had kids. Uh, <laughs> it was like my one place in the world where I could just turn my brain off for a second. It was Kauai is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, and I had no problem finding, you know, uh, yellow tanks, but also I wasn't there 15 years ago and know what it looks like then. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and I also don't know the effects of uh, pollution and all that stuff. So it's interesting to hear because that's not the first time I've heard that, that there used to be 8 million of them, and now there's just a lot less. Mm. But did they just leave the places that you used to find them, or is there just a lot less? Or is there other, is there uh, pollution? Is there uh, environmental impacts? Is there fishing impacts? Is, uh, I don't know if you can, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you can draw, you can't, I don't think you can say uh, with 100% certainty that all of that degradation of fish population just came from the aquarium industry. If it's true, it certainly had to have contributed. Oh yeah, for right? sure. It definitely did contribute, I would imagine, but. Or is it also like a re, 
you know, distribution of population. Like the fish left the place again. Could be. Rest. Yeah. <laughs> could, I, could, <laughs> could be. Very well. Could know. be. Uh, thank you, though. Ah, interesting. Uh, Lucas says, "Good. I'm glad we should not be taking uh, them from the ocean and live more responsible uh, with our hobby." So I like this, man. I, I, you know, I, you would think that the natural inclination of a reef hobbyist is to, you know, protect the hobby, you know, give I a diatribe about why it's so sustainable yeah. and all this other stuff. And the answer is really, man, is whatever it is today, skip the debate. Let's make it more sustainable. Mm, easy. You know, like, because I, yeah. I don't know. You can listen to wherever and, like, unless you're the one doing the studies, you know, all these studies, one way or another, are all biased in some mm. fashion, so it's really hard to read between the lines in these things. But what I can do is make the decision today that I want to be part of making it better. Mm. So, uh, as an individual, we can all do that. Uh, Elaine says, would like all my fish to be captive bred. Okay, I think there's a, a slice of, a piece of every hobbyist that would love that too. Okay, so I'm gonna out this, all right? All right. I, I hadn't even told you this yet. <laughs> I just crossed my mind. Okay. So after talking to the biota uh, guy, and Elliot's gonna kill me. He has, I haven't talked to him about this yet. <laughs> so after talking to the, the biota team, and I was look, looking at their website and all these fish that they have, I'm like, you know, man, wouldn't it be cool if I got one of each of these for the 360 at my house? Mm. And I could feel good that, like, I mean, I got a couple of fish in there already that don't fit the bill. But uh, that a vast majority of the fish that are here, captive, captive bred, mm. had no impact on the ocean. In we, fact, had a positive impact because it probably led to the release of other ones. I'll do you one better. We've got a brand new uh. Red Sea 900 XXXL going up right here. What if we did all captive bred in that one? Done deal. Okay, we did it. You just heard it. All right, so <laughs> biota tank, uh, right there, I guess. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, I can't guarantee it. But I'd like to That will it. be where we're leaning towards. I don't know why I can't guarantee it. I, why I can. not? You I can. can, you can. That 900 gallon XXXL will be full of captive bred only fish. Wow. All right, well, yeah. there we go. We All just right. did it. So maybe we'll make some more rays in there too. So now you, don't, now you don't make Elliot mad either. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm probably going to have to send him to him to quarantine him. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? I, it's probably going to be the evolution of finally the we show you the quarantine episode. Process. Because send him all the calories. Because we're finally going to do sense. it for this 900 calories. There you go. I don't know. Evolution. Cool. All right. Angry well. uh, Owl Aquarium says, periodic bands are positive in his opinion or her opinion. Mm. Let the reefs recover for a while. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, that's an actually interesting uh, standpoint. Like, uh, if you're in control of this, like... Hey, when you're on, when you're off. That's actually a, like an interesting input. This is something that we do in the farmlands in Montana where I come from. It's called you know strip farming, uh, where every other year you'll see a big giant strip of dirt for next to a big giant strip of wheat, and then so on and so forth. And then the following year, they all flip sides. Well, I mean, even if it, like what you were gonna do was like every other year, or like two years, you know, two years off, one year's mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. huh. Do you run it like the Olympics? Every time it's an Olympic year, we will, they will hand out passes and uh, uh, licenses to, for collection. I mean, that might be hard for like a business to actually operate around, but at the same time, uh, you know, kind of a cool way to provide, you know, a sustainable thing. And this is one of the things actually that I want to touch on mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, people like look at pets as uh, like some kind of sometimes like a really awesome thing they're near and dear or heart yeah and some kind of like this optional thing in life like uh, you don't need that pet I disagree man hmm. like I can't I can tell you eight million people who say that their aquarium is their release this is the oh, place yeah. man where they sit down for a moment mm -hmm. and they can just watch the stress go out to sea yeah you know I uh, can just feel it leave them when they watch the animals they're taken care of. And now I'm a little different. I don't actually sit there and watch it. But I can feel the stress relief mm. when I work on it. I've talked, to, I've talked to uh, several like veterans who have reef tanks and that's kind of, that's their release too, is I just sit there for hours and watch these fish swim around. Okay, so as you can imagine, I get a lot of uh, emails and PMs and stuff to the point where I can't answer them uh, anymore. There's so many, but 
I go do read through them sometimes because yeah. it's just like really nice to hear those communications. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how many people I have seen kick alcoholism, heroin, meth, oh, yeah. wrote you letters. all kinds of different things, wrote physical letters, handwritten. To you, I've yeah. met him at the shows. Yep. Uh, I've, I've seen him in all kinds of PS. Uh, PM. Come through like Changed surgery recovery and stuff just by watching videos and oh. then get, starting a tank. Remember oh, yeah. Him? That yeah. kid who, there was a and young like kid. Like double lung surgery or something. The only it? way he got through his lung surgery is watching Beerus TV videos and keeping his mind off of this awful thing that's happening to him. Yeah. And uh, he's going to have afterwards. this reef tank yep. afterward, and he did it. Yeah, that was awesome. Good so, story. So, like, you know, you think of pets as, like, this awesome, optional thing, man, but they bring so much joy as a pet owner, but also as a stress relief uh, and a place to put energy. Yeah. They're valuable to our lives in the same way, man, actually, as, you know, when you have a hamburger, mm -hmm. man. It <laughs> was valuable to my life, man. And, you know, so if you can, you know, I guess it's kind of like if you're going to go hunt cows or you're going to produce them. <laughs> I, I don't know. Nobody really feels that bad about that element because it's important to our lives to eat and provide protein. Mm. But it's also important to find joy and uh, stress relief. So I don't know, man. I, I think it's really interesting to, to think about the whole thing and why they're so important to us. And there's, there's a reason. Why so many people who are watching this have, I mean, a cheap reef tank these days, even when I started, it was like two grand when you really got into it. You thought it was 500 bucks, oh, but yeah. that was garbage. No, 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 no. And then by the time you're done with it, man, it could easily be five, 10, 20, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. After you were like loaded it full of corals, you five years later, it's pretty, pretty expensive. You didn't do this just to have a fish tank. You did it for something so much more. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's exactly. I did it for the challenge just because this is difficult. Like, like, like we've said before, this is one of the most difficult pets that you could ever want to own, and you made the decision to do it. So I'd say the challenge, too, for me, I mean, I, I just saw the thing one day, and I'm like, this is for me. I, like, I want to I wanna do this at my house. Yeah. But also, when I got into it, why I kept doing it now, I guess, for 17 years is because I loved the challenge. I love learning something new. I love sharing it. Mm. I love just the process of something difficult and learning about it. Yeah. Which is for me, man, a stress relief and makes my oh, life yeah. better. Oh yeah. So thank you, fish. <laughs> uh, thank all of you. Thank you, corals. Uh, what you uh, what you bring to my life. But let's get back to it and find sustainable ways. So that was really the conversation. We deviated a little bit. Yep. But that was why these things are so valuable and why we can think of how ways to respect them as well. So here we catch another one. Uh, I do got to say thanks to Paul. That's crop rotation, not strip oh. farming. <laughs> farming. <laughs> like, what do I know about farming? Uh, DC Reefer, uh, is this a temporary ban or permanent? Well, it's it's listed as temporary. Everybody who talks to me feels like uh, it's Hawaii's probably going to last for a while. Yeah. So there are. I think you know what I, I know. Elliot is out there trying to do anyway. Is like if we can find ways to work with the Hawaiian government to go out and get uh, some uh, uh, banded angels or the uh, wrasses to collect for the for purpose, the purpose of, of breeding. Of yes, that's so, that's. Good. But what you're going to have to do is there's not a promise of a better future. You're going to have to find a way mm. to add more than you take out, right? right? And probably by a thousand X. Mm. Like if I can find a way to release a thousand parrotfish uh, for food, uh, uh, sus uh, sus sustainable food sources, can I take out two of these flame rasses for breeding purposes? And you know, hopefully there's reasonable people around. You'd there imagine you'd get approval for a project like that. Like I'm not; these are not going to the aquarium industry to be sold around. It's uh, it's going so that we can learn how to captive breed these things. The the problem with that is a lot of there's a lot of bad actors out there that will try to you get know, manipulate those, that. Yeah, of course. So you're gonna have to find the the people that their actions show mm. they're gonna add more than they take out. Mm. Right? You know, one thing that we didn't hit on is uh, the the cost of the supply chain, the supply chain of these fish and the cost as it gets down to the, to the end game. So I was reading somewhere that, you know, the, uh, and this might've been back in 16 when some of this Hawaii talk first kind of started coming up was uh, like these fish go for anywhere from 
like two to ten to whatever dollars straight from the collector to who are, whoever's shipping them in the industry, and then three four hands later they're at you know sixty dollars. Yeah. So one of the things I think would be cool is uh, I mean I, I hate to say it this way, but if, if you, you could cut out some of the layers of, well, that, of handling of an animal, and that that's such a low price at the very first trade off is makes you just it kind of in. You can't respect Inher it. No, and it inherently drives you to get more because how else am I going to make a living unless I'm doing more $2 fish? Well, and, uh, and when it's $2, it's also easier to let three die to, uh, with really poor care than it is to put mm. good care in and make sure the one lives. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So, but if you can, you know, remove some of the layers. The middle. Uh, distribution, yeah. and handling, yeah. and all that stuff, you could probably... You know, and the, the faster you can get it from the person who collected it to the person that's going to care for it, the better. That's probably true of every animal. Oh, that yeah, easily. No. All right, next one. Uh, Kyle says, I have no problem paying 1.5 to 3 times more for captive fish, but it's really hard to find in Canada. Yeah, so once everybody's willing to pay 1.5 to 3 times, it'll be really easy. Yeah, it'll right? be. And then it'll actually probably fall back down again. Yeah. So this is the kind of thing, man, is like if you look at uh, breeders of animals, like, again, we've said this before, but the place that produces the most fish or most pets or most animals is always the least responsible uh, mm. and uh, the least healthy in most cases as well. Yeah. Now, if it's a dog or a cat or any other thing, it could be a tarantula, the ones that put the most care into making sure you get the right healthy tarantula or, uh, you know, like a dart frog or whatever it mm -hmm. might be, are usually more expensive. Oh, yeah. Right? Almost in every case. Yeah. And so, but if we can find, you know, some of these things that are really easy to breed, like clownfish, those are always going to be inexpensive. Those are the entry That's level fish that we can get in. And if you really think about it, like, oh man, I don't want to break the bank and all these fish. Well, if you stop killing them, most of these fish are going to live a really long time. <laughs> uh, and they're your pets. And it's like the cost of it, like for me, if I'm going to buy a dog, I'll spend extra on one that is going to be healthy mm -hmm. and uh, one that is going to live a long time and it'll be cheaper than the inverse. <laughs> or uh, you just yeah. roll, roll the dice way. like me and get one off Craigslist and he's just the picture of health. <laughs> okay, well, so we uh, like uh, we had two Pomeranians in my family at yeah. one point in time, right? One of them was like 300 bucks from a pet store and the other one was like 1,000 bucks from a breeder. Yeah. Okay, the $1,000 one from the breeder, like live forever, no issues. never had any issues, yeah. anything. The $300 one had knee problems, like liver problems, all kinds of problems, heart problems, everything, mm. man. Like. Must have put like, it's not like it, the dog got us a ten thousand dollar bill. It's like it got us a thousand dollars like every single year, <laughs> man. Like it, it costs so much more in the end, mm. you know. I don't know. Uh, and it lived, didn't live as long either. Yeah. It was very sad. Uh, we got twenty bucks from. Oh, um, thank you very much. This is real simple to remember. Let's. Let's yeah. captive breed Ryan's hair. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Tigbert uh, says, cultivate from wild is greater than captive bred is greater than repop or to repopulate the wild. So cultivate mm -hmm. from the wild, captive breed, and then repopulate the wild. I agree. And I think that's, uh, I mean, that's not just the pet industry and this fish industry. That's a, a, with a lot of species that are on the endangered or whatever list. That's the, the path that people they take to repopulate, is you bring them in, you try to breed them. That's what a lot of zoos and things do. My buddy does that for Omaha, Nebraska Zoo. They breed um, Costa Rican frogs up here in Nebraska and then ship, ship them back down to Costa Rica. Okay, so somebody actually, this like brings up an interesting topic. Somebody asked me about this one. It's like, well, are you taking all the corals of the ocean? Are you guys taking, you know, are going to like, uh, uh, you know, ruin the availability, and the answer is that like 1% that's artistically pleasing is what they take yeah. out. But more important than that, like, you know, nature is actually, and you know, like uh, changes in the environment mm. is actually killing more coral than anybody could ever possibly kill by collecting, collecting them, them out of yeah. the ocean, right? And as hobbyists... We put them through the ringer. Well, what we're actually creating is yeah. like an arc. Uh. There's like 
hundreds of thousands, if not species. millions of tanks in the United yeah. States alone, much less Australia and Europe and China and all over the world, man, that house Living these examples. animals yep. like an ark, making sure that they're always available. Well, and no, I also think that I don't know if it'll ever happen, like where Aquarius will pool together in and put some of those, repopulate some of the oceans back with that. But the, you would imagine that if we were to put corals back in the ocean that we've put in our tanks, these things would be uh, more, they would less susceptible to, you know, all of the stressors that the ocean has. That, that tenth or hundredth of a change of uh, pH will less likely affect the corals that we've had in our tanks out there in the ocean because they've been put through the ringer of our poor husbandry. You know, so that is actually a really good point that, you know, there are a lot of corals out there, like, you know, all kinds of SPS, coral, and acropora, like, I don't get why we're still taking the stuff out of the ocean because all the captive bred mm. stuff and the samples that we all have, mm -hmm are way nicer than most of the stuff that comes out of the ocean. Not only does it look nicer and it's predictable when you buy it, it actually stays what it's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Uh, because when you buy it uh, from uh, Battle Corals or wherever, we took a good picture of it, and then you got it to your house, well, it came from a captive environment. It came from artificial seawater, artificial lighting, artificial everything, and it was surviving and thriving there. Mm. And now it's going to thrive in your area, is in your tank as well. Yeah. If I take it out of uh, the ocean from Fiji, fly it around the planet four times through four dist distributors, <laughs> and then get it finally to your house in totally different lighting than it was used to and different flow and nutrient levels, it's mm. probably the mortality rate is probably 10x. Whether it shares the same color or traits that you bought it for, also 10x lower than really the mm. capture. So, the only thing really here uh, for those types of corals is desire. Like somebody steps up and says, you know what? It's time. Yeah. It's time to, you know, stop collecting those things. Like there's no reason to other there's than tons it's of slightly green, more expensive. tons of green slimers out there. Why are we getting green slimers anymore? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, I, there's no good reason. And uh, are I, the, I don't know. My, the, the one concern, and I, I don't know if, it's, if it is a concern Pest or not. free is too. That's what I, the, the one concern of putting, you know, some of the old corals from our tanks back into the ocean is are they now exposed or are we exposing those colonies in the ocean to some of the pests that we have here, acro eating flatworms and red bugs and all these different types of things? Or will the natural ocean just take care of those because of the fish that... Uh, I won't claim to be smart enough to know the answer. Yeah, that I know. I don't know, but I, I would imagine that we... I imagine that's not the way you would do it. You take it out of your tank and put just it in the go ocean. go straight to the ocean. You yeah. go to the ocean, take the coral. If you want to help the ocean, take the coral there that's already there and frag it, grow it out in the ocean and replant it. And they're it. doing that, the mariculture stuff. Yeah, they yeah. go replant it. Yeah, you know? yeah that's I, happening pretty well. I, I, like, I, and the mariculture stuff is definitely happening. Like, mariculture is obviously much better. You know, you're farming it essentially underwater. But, like, from a pet perspective, you're still getting an animal that was, like, grown underneath the sun in the flow of, uh, you know, Bali or wherever, mm -hmm. and not Minnesota artificial <laughs> environment. So right. all the survivability and all this coloration and all those other things uh, still come into play, even if responsibilities are removed from mm. it. But you can, you know, go out. And one of the things I've heard is what they, a lot of places will do is they do like conditioned frags now. Mm. So uh, Eye Kitchen Coral was telling me about this, actually. Mm. They take uh, some of the wild caught stuff, then uh, they'll break it up and then grow it into frags. And then they'll grow it under artificial light for like months before that they sell it to the fish store. Mm. Okay, a hey, bravo, uh, yeah. eye catching coral because and you're that, acclimating them to the life that they're about to live. Yeah, yeah, they care about these animals rather than because it's way cheaper just to turn it over immediately. Oh, get it from right? the ocean, yeah, chop it up, die, who cares? frag it, right? Send it. So they took this thing out of the ocean. Uh, by the way, they have one of the probably the biggest aquaculture farms uh, as well. Outdoors so they're doing, or something they're too, doing both. It? I don't know if it's outdoors know. or not. I, but, I would like to go see. Uh, so if if they do this in this manner and they do the conditioned frags, what they've done is lowered the overall mortality mm. in the amount of animals that need to come mm -hmm. out of the ocean mm -hmm. to support the demand. 
Yeah. So bravo to them. Good for them. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is a great idea or a great uh, opportunity to plug some of the people that are doing it really well. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Right. Uh, Ten bucks from uh, Veggie to DT. Thank oh, you. Thank you Love very much. BRS. Appreciate you all. We appreciate you. Uh, Peter asks, uh, says, captive only tank, coral, fish, rock, all of it. Oh, so mm. captive only fish, uh, maric or aquacultured, probably not maricultured, corals. Imagine mm. where it would be the delineation there for corals. Mm. Uh, and then uh, probably just dry rock instead of live rock. I mean, that would be a really inter interesting idea. This is a, a non-ocean impact tank. Wow. All right, man, I'm, I feel inspired. So we're going to do the best <laughs> we can. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Paul says, uh, he question, do, you, do they really utilize chemicals to stun the fish and collect them from the water? That has been mm -hmm. a collection method. Bad actors do. Yeah. Right? No. So... Uh, Maybe yeah. not in the, the States, but you know, in other parts of the world I've heard of it happening, but cyanide was one of the biggest ones. Yeah, I mean, that was a belief that people were cyanide fishing and, and like the fact and somebody must have done it, Yeah, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, like, I, I, how much of that bad actor type stuff, they certainly give uh, people a bad name. Yeah. Uh, I would like to think that that isn't commonly done. Uh, it's hard to know. Yeah. Well, U.S. regulation, especially down in Hawaii, and this, where kind of this whole conversation stemmed from, was the uh, was the practices for collecting them. In which case, it was the the fine mesh nets that where this kind of conversation sort of, from what I've read, from where it kind of started, from my understanding, it's where it started from. And so already, you know, we're past the uh, you can't use dynamite and cyanide, uh, but now we're even taking that even further on the type of nets that you can use. So. Some places like Hawaii regulate the collection and some places don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would like to think that that is not uh, as big of a, a deal as, as some people now, say. Now, yeah. I, I, you don't hear about it very often uh -huh. these days, so it's kind of like, seems like an artifact of something that used to happen yeah. more than it does today, but you have to find out. Uh, Dave, are we going to that Todd Gardner, Gardner at the end? Okay. Yeah? yeah? Okay, that's so a good one. I want to uh, uh, just kind of close this out here. Yeah. So now that we had some conversation, uh, how does everybody here feel? Like, give us a little vote in the comments here of, do you actually support Hawaii in closing down? And that the fact mm. that it, uh, play, it supports places like Biota to actually replace a lot of these fish in a captive bred environment that maybe not only has no impact on the ocean, but it actually has a positive impact that they release the fish back out mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know what, no, I just really don't think it had an impact and I really want my yellow tank. <laughs> I mean, I would love to hear, like, what all of you guys think and, and share because it's the community's input that, like, really drives all of this. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, uh, like, where it goes. And the more that we publicly support each other in the best paths, the more the industry sees it. So, like, if somebody came along and watched this video, uh, and probably somebody will, um, you know, Biota or a fish uh, 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 breeder or whatever. This says I should continue investing in this. Hmm. Or for somebody that used to be in Hawaii and still wants to have their business, says, ah, this is the path forward. Yeah. I, we should start trying to figure this out because it was inevitable. Yeah. Uh, no matter what, no matter what our beliefs are, this was coming. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, There's uh, definitely a. Uh, an influx of support, a couple, oh, support, uh, support, support. A couple of non-supports. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of all up the all over the board here. Oh, very but, interesting. Um, uh, did you want to hit that one more time? Oh yes. By the <laughs> way, so uh, for all of you, that, you guys want to uh, come work with us? Yeah, uh, I, I, I said Please. I would. I said I would hit on this. So HR, I'm going to appease HR <laughs> here uh, and uh, everybody else. So the those of you who don't know, uh, I mean, you must have because it's on rebuilding and everything. BRS took on some uh, investors and some people yep. here, and uh, like the, the, the team moon. is growing, and we're going to the moon. Come along with us. <laughs> uh, and so we're hiring two more actors. So if you want to be like uh, Randy, Ryan. Thomas, uh, come on, join <laughs> us. Uh, we also need an editor. So mm -hmm. if you like to you edit, like read Dave stuff. And Carlos? Yeah, come on. Uh, and if you want to go see it, you, you can you can apply by looking down at the work at BRS tab in the footer of the bulk resupply yep. site. Yep, yep, yep. Or it's like bulk resupply 
like forward slash careers. Mm. Uh, we're also looking for a BRS TV uh, project manager. So if you want to whip uh, Ryan and Randy into submission, <laughs> keep us on task. Hey guys, and write descriptions, you guys got to do this video titles. and this video. Let's do it. Yeah, and do all that stuff. All right. That's fun. Uh, and again, from all that, you'll see more investigates, you'll see more product guides, you're going to see hopefully some tank tours, you're going to see a brand new set we're developing, hopefully right now with a sustainable fish and coral uh, <laughs> uh, theme to it. That'll Such be really a great fun. Theme. Uh, and we're hiring more picking and shipping uh, specialists. So if you want to join the team ah. in the back, they've got inventory team uh, that's hiring. they got uh, the pick and pack and ship guys. CRM marketing. This one might be uh, you could do externally HubSpot. if you wanted to. Mm. Yeah, if you, if you know how to do email and stuff like that and HubSpot, mm -hmm. you can join us. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring wholesale seats. So if you want Work to... Work with your local fish stores. You know, I, I, I can probably do remote as well. So if you're like part of the wholesale world in in uh, reefing and you'd love to join the team. You don't want to move know. up to Minnesota? <laughs> you probably don't have to be you here actually for to. that one. If you are a tech guru and you work uh, with Magento, uh, know how to program Magento, we're hiring two new developers uh, to add of a team of already four. It's all so, at the bottom of uh, our website. All right, we're also hiring writer, uh, potentially, for uh, writing articles here. So if you don't like video, or lots of people who don't like video, I mean, it hurts me to my core. Write some but if you don't like video, and you like reading articles, hopefully we'll have those too. And then uh, two seats that we might uh, bring in the future. Okay, this one's for me. Yeah. Right, uh, so. You have to be a this unicorn. One, this one didn't get approved, because I luckily they approved all the rest of this other <laughs> stuff. You know, uh, uh, but uh, in this case, I'm gonna go to bat for it if the miracle unicorn person shows up. If you do so, better social yeah. media than me. If you are a, feel like you are a unicorn uh, social media uh, specialist or you manager. You can take us to the moon. Yeah, and you really wanna produce awesome content, Facebook, TikTok, all, Instagram, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know all the rest Some of them. Some YouTube stuff. Yeah, if you wanna do all that, Hit HR and tell them I'm the unicorn that Ryan was looking for, and I'll push it through. All right, uh, we're also potentially looking for somebody who wants to shoot aquariums all over the nation. You have to be a game superstar you to, shooter for this. So you like, be you've been doing this shooter. for a living for 10, 15 years, and now you want to travel and go shoot aquariums all over the nation so we can share on Beers TV. This one also. I'll push through if I can find it. So those are those jobs won't be posted, but if you're that unicorn, you can do it better than anybody else in the in the world, then you should probably send an email to HR. Come Joyce, we're going to the moon. All right, so All we're right. gonna kick it off to, uh, actually we have a magna talk from a, f a few years back from Dac uh, Dr. Chad Callahan. Mm. It's the, the topic is using captive bred aquacultured to reduce pressure on the wild. Perfect uh, segue into that conversation. You can find that. Right here, right, right here. after the video, or you can go find it on our channel. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week.